hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Ademola Badmos if this is your first time of coming please do not forget to like and subscribe um we are talking about uh, we are going to be learning how to write uh, ddd scripts using cypress and kimba preprocessor in the previous video we have this we have discussed why we are why we'll be using a an older version of cypress as opposed to the cypress 10 version please if you haven't seen the first video i recommend that you watch it because it will be helpful in um going along so without further ado let us begin our project so we would uh, create a new folder oh this is too big okay so um and it's so small either as well rather so um let's open a folder we will create that now we are using here the classes are here so we create a new folder and we call this cy bdd all right so this is where the fun stuff begins so let's wait for it to load up so we are our file our folder is loaded up so we can open our terminal in the previous videos i've done about cypress i did sh show you how to open your terminal you can come here or you can use the uh, shortcuts created if you know how to use the shortcut i um, use the shortcut most times so let me zoom my screen a bit yeah so this should be fine i'm going to clear this so in the previous videos i've also told you how you will start your project by creating an empty package.json with this command either you use npm init and you begin to create all the records or you use npm init hyphen y to automatically create one for you so we don't want to waste much of our time so we'll automatically create one like this and you can see a package.json file is created and the next thing we do right after that is to begin to install all that we need in the previous video i did mention that we are going to be uh, using three libraries we are going to be using cypress we are going to be using cypress fill command and we are also going to be using Cypress cooking bar preprocessor, which would help us achieve BDD. The Cypress fill command will help us extend the command feature file, while the Cypress itself is um, the main framework that we want to use. And in the previous videos that I've done, I've also shown you how to install your um, <clears throat> your dependencies in the dev depend in the dev dependency objects so we continue that way we do npm i iphone d we can write everything in one line now that we want to install a version of cypress it is best to do it this way call the version because if we don't put this the implication is it will install the latest version of cypress so with this it will install the version 9.7.0 so watch out when that is written out so we do cypress um cucumber pre processor and the last one cypress fill no command so we run all three so let's open our package.json when it's done so you will see that it will install all the three at once so watch out the version of Cypress that will be installed will be 9.7.0. It won't be the latest version because uh, we have um, instructed it to install that. So let us wait for um, that to happen. So it has been installed and everything is there. So we have our node modules and we have a packet log JSON. And um, let's open, no, not the packet log JSON. Let's open our packet log JSON. 
as you can see 9.7.0 is done document symbol i've needed to using blah 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 do we need this i know let's just leave this out of it for now it doesn't affect what we want to do so as usual since we already have everything that we need we will be bringing out the other fun stuff but before we bring out the other fun stuff is it it is pertinent to 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 note that we need some additional configuration one of the configurations that we need is this let me copy this we will add this here and i will tell you why it is needed <coughs> Definitions. We'll set this to true. Now, the the implication of setting this to true, it uh, means that the cosmic config, it's a feature in JavaScript ecosystem. The cosmic config, it al uh, it helps to resolve. It helps to load uh, all configurations done. Like if you um link two files together it's create it uh, establishes that link and look for the files that works together like a dependency so when you set your non-global step definitions to true it means when you open your cypress folder let's do that here npx cypress open if you write this to open the cypress folder because i already have a 9.7.0 I didn't see a message like it looks like I'm using 9.7.0 for the first time. For but for those who will be using it for the first time, you will see a message like that that this will be the first time, so it will launch some things for you. So in case your bandwidth, uh, your internet have a fault or something and it times out, just run the same command again and it will run. So as I was saying, let me open the Cypress structure to make my point clearer. So with this set to true. The structure of the BDD will be done in such a way that your common folders, where your common steps and your step definition will be defined, will be inside your integration folder, will be co-located with where your feature file is. But if this is set to false, it means you will use your, you would have to use your support folder. That's the way the cosmic config would be able to resolve your folder. It would you have to put your files in your support folder. And your, you have to put your step definition files in your support folder. And if you leave it undefined, it means it becomes global and it can uh, be resolved anywhere you put it. Right. But for the sake of clarity and simplicity, it is good. It is recommended. And best practice wise, it is recommended you set it to true because it simplifies the structure of your code. All right. So I haven't said that. And also know that this would obey in case you open your cypress.json file and you change the destination of your integration folder, it will still obey the same structure because of the cosmic config ability to resolve the um, the, um, the parts. We do not need these examples, so we will be deleting this. So that is deleted. So now that we've started with the configuration, you understand why this is needed? One more thing that we need to do is we need to open the plugins folder and create a Cucumber plugin. Everything you need, in all honesty, everything you need is already in the documentation. So when you open the documentation for Cypress Cucumber, you will see the instructions that you need to follow. So as you can see, this is how you set up the configurations in your plugins. And lastly, you will do this and I will tell you why this is needed. Right. So let's continue. We can, should we just copy it or we should write it ourselves? Let me just copy. So we copy it and we come into our Cypress and uh, we um, paste, let's paste it to make things faster. 
Now, why do we need it in plugins? In my previous videos, when I was explaining the structure of Cypress folders, I did tell you that when you need to put in some node, node related uh, node related dependencies, you use the plugin folder. So this one will run before even you, be, you know that I told you that what stays in your support folder would run before any of your script runs. But this one is a node based um, uh, plugin. So it will run alongside when your node is running. So it becomes part, part of your plugin. So this is how you set up your Cypress preprocessor because it will run alongside your node. We don't need a config file, so I don't, we are not using anything config so we can equally leave it this way because um if you check before i uh, i pasted that you see that there's a reason for that if you're using on it is used to hook into various events in cypress if you're using config it is to resolve cypress config but we are not using config but we might need it later so maybe we would leave it but i don't think we need it but let's just leave it who knows maybe when we start ex uh, expanding our script so we have done two things. We have extended, we have um, defined our global step definitions to be true. So which means all our files, even when we have a common step, we'll be putting it inside the integration folder. Then we have also set up the plugin config. Now, the third, the third thing we are going to do, the third thing is uh, we are going to, where is our cypress.json file? Now that's weird. Did we delete the Cypress the JSON file? No. Oh, so this is the Cypress the JSON file. So in our Cypress the JSON file, we'll put a configuration called test files. These test files means that we are trying to tell our cypress um, configuration to um, recognize feature files to recognize feature files as a test file so we do it this way feature of features right so any type of fit, the only files it will recognize as a test file right now, when we launch our script will be a feature file, right? To test that, if I come into um, the integration file, integration folder, and I write uh, and I create, let me say, test.spec.js. If I create this and I open the runner, you will see it's it will say it has no spec file because it is expecting a feature file now but if i do uh, come here and i create a new file and i say test dot feature that is the extension of a cucumber a gherkin file dot feature if i do this and i open the runner it sees a feature file that is the essence of of this particular configuration now that we have done this one last thing before we end this video is we need for cucumber to work extensively and judiciously on our uh on on our vs code we come to extension extensions then we google cucumber i have already had it installed the one that is highly recommendable and is good is cucumber gherkin full support do not try to install many of it. I made those mistakes in the past where I installed so many. As you can see, there are so many of it. I just kept clicking install, install. Um, and it, it began to make me feel like my test had errors because all those plugins were kind of probably fighting, uh, jostling for control. So when I wrote my feature files, they were having false positives, some errors. I thought they had errors. They were working, but I was not comfortable with the red lines I was seeing until I uninstalled everything and I installed only one of them. But this one, as you can see, it has a lot of downloads, which means it has a very good uh, recommendation. So that is one I recommend. So now that we all, we've done all the structure, in the next video, we'll talk about the Gherkin syntax and we'll begin to write codes. But before we go, let us quickly delete the um, 
the tests the the um, test files that we created because we are going to be creating everything from scratch um delete okay so let's have this and um see you in the next video do not forget to like and subscribe if you find this useful thank you for watching and bye bye